I'm Anna. And I'm Fran. And you're listening to Murder Words. Welcome back to Murder Words. Was that too much? No, that it was like a lot. <laughs> no, I'm slap happy today. I never know how to do a good like intro, and I'll listen to other podcasts, and they just seem like they're it, they're killing it. Like it's like they're like right in a business. We're just over here like the most awkward. So like check mic, check mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, how you doing? So the story that I'm going to cover today, I know that I said when I did the vampire killer that. That was probably going to be the most graphic story. I think I lied. Oh. This one is a lot. Someone actually recommended this to us. I don't know who it was. I'll have to go back and look, but... Oh, if you were sending it I'm concerned about that. Have you were sending it in? I can't remember who it was. It was on, like, a post, and I asked... I made a post and asked who people wanted us to cover. Oh, I love these ones. And I wrote everyone down. Okay, go. I love this one. And I don't know what it is, but I love it because someone recommended yeah. it. Yeah, so I'll go through that list and I'm more attracted to the ones that I've never heard of. Yeah, me because too. Because I'm like, I'll, I'll learn about that when mm-hmm. I'm researching it. And I am actually very concerned for the person who suggested this <laughs> for wanting to hear about it. Okay. <laughs> because it's pretty bad. Okay. It's really, really bad. So, it's called... 44 Days of Hell. Oh, not starting out great. No. It's about this, and this takes place in Japan, so there are also some names. Um, I don't think it will be too bad, but um, the main, the victim's name is Junko Furuda. So that's who we're going to kind of be talking about. Junka? Junko. Junko. Okay. Yeah. Junko. I actually think it's a really cute It is a really pretty name. Junko. So Junko was born on January 18th. 1971 in Misato, Japan. She had like a super normal childhood. I'm not going to go into like too much detail of her childhood um, because it's like nothing crazy happened. It was like very normal, like f- like nice childhood. Normal upbringing. Yeah. Good. From what I can find, she was like a great kid. Every parent's dream. She attended high school in Misato, Japan, and she was described as very like pretty you know, good looking, mm-hmm. which doesn't make that any different. I sometimes I'm listening to stories and they like really talk about how beautiful the person is. Like that makes the murder different, but oh yeah, it doesn't. But she was. Um, I feel like I talk about how insides are pretty. Yeah, like they were the best. Yeah, <laughs> but she was. Um, that was like something that really mm-hmm. stood out about her. She's a cutie. Yep, she was active. She really focused on her grades. Like she didn't smoke or drink, and apparently. Like, I mean, like anywhere in high school, that's, it's hard to resist that type of temptation. She got me beat. Yeah. She was not afraid to say no. Like she, she was like, no, like I'm focusing on my grades. Like. Go her. I know. I like that. Go her. And she was like super popular. So when she was 16, the school bully, Hiroshi Miyano, had a crush on her. He decided that even though she like didn't live the same lifestyle as him, he was going to ask her out. Like, he was just going to go for it. Okay. And she was like, no thanks, Hiroshi. Hiroshi? No thanks, Hiroshi. And this infuriated him. Oh. Like, enraged, dude. No one turns down Hiroshi. That's what I wrote. There's no, one, no one turns down Hiroshi. <laughs> no one turns down Hiroshi. Because that's how I feel like he's acting. I know. It sounds like it's like the beginning of a love story. It's not. Okay. It is absolutely not. Okay. So not only is he the school bully, but he also has ties with the Yakuza. Whoa. What? What? Yes. So the Yakuza is like a super violent, just ruthless gang throughout Japan. Like super well known. Like if someone says like, Anything about the Yakuza, like, they, everyone knows what they're talking about. Yes. I've definitely, definitely heard them. Yes. Yeah. So, Hiroshi was not handling this rejection well. Like, no one ever told him no because they were afraid of him. Mm -hmm. And he got with his friend, Sinji Minato, and they were just going to blow off some steam. When I say blow off some steam, I don't remember, remember, I don't mean, like, Drink. Drinking or like smoking pot. I mean, like, 
they're both experienced rapists by this time. At 16? At 16. So when I say blow off steam, I mean like they're going to be picking a victim and then oh, they're going to figure out like what to do with that victim. Oh. Like this is a normal thing they did. They went to the park and they would watch. Else. Yeah. So like they know how to pick victims based on body language. Um, like they said that they could tell if like the person was going to scream or fight or if they would like be someone who would willingly go with them. Like they could tell that by going to the park and watching. That is people. very creepy. Yeah. That actually really upsets me. Yeah. So, and they were like good at it. Like they knew how to, at 16, at a young age. They could pin that out. Yes. Around 830 on November 25th, 1988, they saw Junko riding her bike. Oh no. And at this point, a light bulb went off. They were like, that's the girl who rejected Hiroshi. Like, we're going to go get her. And they decided to come up with, like, a good guy, bad guy plan. So, Hiroshi was going to go to her on her bike and, like, start talking to her. Like, he went up super creepy. She was obviously nervous. Like, like what is he doing here? Yeah, because like, she probably just... knows, like, who he is and his background. Like, hey. Yeah. Um, and then... Sinji comes in like the hero. So this is called the heroic bystander, like this move they're pulling. Okay. So Hiroshi's going up to her, like being creepy, being the bad guy. He kicks her, he kicks her bike over while she's on it. Like just straight up abuse, like yeah. already, like kicks her over. And then Sinji runs up like the hero and starts yelling at Hiroshi. Oh. Like he's like, hey, what are you doing? Like, stop you're being me you know what i mean yeah like, don't do like that to hero. her yeah and hiroshi runs off like he acts like this work and ran off yep. and so senji says to her like he's still close do you need someone to take you home and junko says yes because she's scared like he's he'll try to follow her mm-hmm. and she thinks this guy just like came out of nowhere like a white knight and like saved her yeah so he's like so, a good guy she can go yeah there. Man, they are good. They're good. Like, they had this plan. Like, I imagine that they just looked at each other like, good guy, bad guy. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Like, yeah, that just like thing. that. Didn't even have to, like, really discuss it. So they were just walking along and talking like normal. And Junko started to realize that he wasn't really listening to her. Like, he was kind of walking her in a different direction. And she started to get nervous. And they end up, like, he walked her to an abandoned warehouse. And it is said to have ties with the Yakuza. And all of a sudden, the situation changes. Can, like, can you imagine just the, the minute that you realize, What's like, really going he on? is, yeah, like, they were working together, probably. Like, mm-hmm. what is, what is happening right now? Sinji tells her that he also has ties with Yakuza. And if she doesn't listen to him, he's going to kill her entire family. And I'm sure he would. Yeah. And she's freaking out at this point. Like, obviously, she doesn't want her family to die. She's 16. Like, what What do you even do in that situation? Literally. Freeze what, and fear. What do you do? Freeze and fear. He takes her into the warehouse and immediately rapes her. Oh. Then he tells her he's going to take her to a hotel so she can wash up and everything was going to be okay. Like, he acted like he was going to, like... Let her clean up and let her go. Mm -hmm. So she had that little glimmer of hope. But when they got to the hotel, he raped her again. He then called his friends, one being Hiroshi and the other two being Joe Ogura and Yasushi Watanabe. So these four guys are like the main ones. So are they like still in school? Like, they're all, like, 16-year-olds? They are all 16 to 17 years old and still in high school. And all connected with Yazuka. Wow. So, Sinji calls them and brags about what he had just done. Like, I, I literally cannot imagine what that phone call sounds like. Like, hey, bro, I just kidnapped this girl and raped her. The one that you liked that yeah. did something mean to you. I'm sure it was like that. Like, I got her back for you, bro. You know what I mean? Something like that. And instead of, like, I don't know what I expected them to be like. Maybe maybe at the most, the worst thing would be, like, good job. Like, thanks. 
but they literally begged him to keep her at the hotel. They were like, please, like, we want to turn two. Swear. I swear. And so around, like, three in the morning when everything was, like, you know, quiet outside, no one would see them, Sinji takes Junko to the park, and once they are all there, the other three boys rape her. So, oh, my God. Yeah. This isn't even, like, of course, that's awful, but... It's, it's getting worse. It's going to... Oh, my gosh, dude. Like, there's no words I can't even say. So, then they start to realize, like, okay, we have, like, an upstanding citizen here. Not that that makes it any different, but in their minds, they were like, she knows us. Like, she knows who we are. She's a good student. We can't let her go now. I mean, they didn't think about that beforehand? I guess not. Like, she has, like, a family? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, they're in PE together? Yeah. <laughs> Like, Literally, like, they just took, like, a history test yesterday. Yeah. Oh. Um, so they decide that they're going to have to kidnap her. They go through her backpack, because she still has it, and they're, like, rummaging through all of her stuff, and they find her home address on one of her notebooks. So they, like, use that against her. I was going to say, that probably terrified her. Yeah, like, they, they used that to get what they wanted. Mm -hmm. Like, saying, like, now we definitely, you know, can go kill your family. Then they have the issue of... Where are we going to take her? Because they don't live on their own because they're oh, they in high their, school. Yeah, they live with their parents. So, like, what are they going to do? Then they decide, let's take her to Sinji's house in Tokyo. I don't know why they, like, made that decision, why they thought that was the best one. His house was, like, the hangout spot. Gotcha. So, Sinji, if you remember, the names get confusing, but he's the one who initially took her to the warehouse right. and raped her first. Yes. Um... They bring her there, and when they walk in, Sinji's parents and older brother are there. They introduce Junko as his new girlfriend. And at that point, like, she's so scared, she goes along with it. Yeah, I get that. I, I mean, how, how else would they you They could act? be in the gang, too. Like, you know right. what I mean? Like, how... This could be a test, like... Yeah. It's way too, like, far in now. A couple of days later, Junko's parents file a missing persons report. Because their child never returned home. Right, yeah. Police got the word out and everyone was talking about it. This pissed Hiroshi off so bad. Like, he knew he had to come up with an art plan. Like, everyone was talking about it. People were looking for her. And I guess he just... Like, he knew. Obviously, like, what, I mean, what did you think was going to happen? But he forced Junko to call her parents. And he made her tell them that she, like, hated her life. She hated living with them. And she doesn't want to go back. She ran away and is going to stay with friends from now on. And she asked them to please close the investigation. Please don't tell me they did. They they, they believed her. Oh, wow. They believed her. My, my dad would have... Have you seen that movie Taken? Yes. When the dad goes to Europe to find... Mm -hmm. That would be my dad. I know that would be your Instantly. dad. Instantly. Mm -hmm. Anyone who has met my dad knows that that is... Exactly what would have happened. Like, if I called him right now and said I'm in danger, he would not only show up, but he would have an ho a whole arsenal. Yeah. Like a <laughs> posse. Yeah. Like yes. He would. He doesn't play with that kind of stuff. But I don't know if her parents were. Like, obviously, it's not her, her parents' fault. Like, maybe no, they it's thought. Not. Okay, maybe she is okay. So there's no reason for the police to be looking for her if she's. Like, if she's been this great, her, you know what I mean? She's yeah. done so well. She's been so responsible. Maybe she just needs a break. I could see yeah. that. So they, they did. They kind of called it off. It was, and that is like a decision they're going to have to live with for the rest of their life. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, However this is going, I'm sure. It's so bad. Like, I, like, paused because I have to, like, mentally get ready. Things quickly escalated after this. She ended up staying in that house for 44 days. Um, oh, my God. The, the boys eventually came out to say that just those four alone raped her over 400 times within that 44-day period. Oh, this poor girl. 400 times. 44 days. 400 times. And that was just them. They were also trying to earn respect within the Yakuza. So they invited over, like, high-ranking members of the gang to also rape her. So... Altogether, it's estimated that it was 500 plus times in 44 days. This poor... Yeah. And sadly, that's 
probably like, I'm not going to say it's the best thing that happened to her throughout this time, but it's about to get worse. Yeah, it gets a lot worse. I'm not even sure even where to start with the amount of like torturous things they did to her. I don't know if this is the exact order, but this is how, when I did the research, it was like said, I'm sure they did all of this. Repeatedly. Over, yeah. They immediately began to starve her. And that made me realize that seems to be like a theme with the cases that we've covered where they hold people capt- they captive. They starve them. Dependence. Um, I get that. Makes yeah. Them and on them. like they kept her naked like the whole time. Vulnerable. That Cameron Hooker did that to Colleen Sandin, the girl in the box. Mm-hmm. Kept he naked. did the same thing. Mm-hmm. So while they were starving her, like instead of giving her food when they did give her something, they forced her to eat live cockroaches. That is disgusting. Yeah. Like they were using her as like entertainment. Oh my God. And, this poor girl. Yeah, dude. In their minds... That wasn't enough either, so they decided that for the next two days, she could only drink her own urine. Like, that's all she could have, nothing else. And while all that was happening, they thought it would be cool to urinate on her all the time. Oh. So, is this still happening at that guy's house? This is all at that guy's house. Where is his mom and dad? We're going to talk okay. about it. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and apparently, like, the urination thing, it's a normal practice within the Yakuza to, like, humiliate and de- degrade their victims. I could see that. Mm-hmm. So, they began to beat her all the time. Like, literally so much. Including, like, bashing her face onto the floor for no reason. And they said that they would make her sing and dance while they were beating her. This poor... I don't really have anything else to say. This poor girl. Yeah. They began to notice... This pissed me off so bad. I mean, I'm, the whole thing makes me so angry. But they began to notice that they were getting bruised from beating her up so much. And because they are giant piles of literal human shit, mm-hmm. they decide that that can't happen. They need to figure something else out so they don't, don't have to be them? in pain. Oh, okay. So they decided to start using bamboo sticks and iron bars. What? Yeah. So they started beating her with those. They did this so much that they just started to get bored. They were like, this is boring now. We're tired of it. We're tired of beating this little girl to death. So they had to come up with another plan. They decided to hang her from the ceiling upside down. And they used her as a literal punching bag. I know, dude. Literally. I would... I don't know what I would do, obviously. I've never been in this situation, but... I would just want them to kill me. Yeah. Like, stop. What are you doing? Like, there's no reason for any of this. No, just entertainment. Yeah. So, were they going to school still? Oh, I don't know. It never said anything about them, like, attending school throughout the day and coming home at night. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. They probably don't care about it much. I'm just going to throw that idea out there. You're right. Academics were probably not that important at that time. I feel like this was definitely their priority. Okay. So after using her as a punching bag for a while, it sounds they, like a hobby. Just I'm just gonna say it sounded more like a hobby to them. It's like because they're not like I, I can't even explain. Like it's not like this is ongoing torture for 44 days for no reason. Like there's no this you don't do this because of rejection, right? Especially four of you. Like you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's. I don't even know what to say about it. So, yeah, after punching her for a while, they realized that, that was kind of noisy. And it takes a lot of effort to hang her. They were just oh. getting so tired. Ugh. So they laid her on her back on the floor and tied her hands and feet up. Then they found super heavy dumbbells. What? And began to drop them on her stomach. Did she die from this? Unfortunately, no. What? So, I just literally can't... I mean, just standing above someone and dropping dumbbells onto their There's, torso. like, And she was probably a small little girl, too. So... And they starved her, too. They she, starved her. I mean, literally, she's already... If she survived this, she wouldn't... I don't think anyone can ever recover from 
It's 44 days. This. Yeah. After a couple days of the dumbbell situation, she began to lose control of her bowels because Mm. it's destroying her insides. Yes. Like she couldn't hold her urine. Like it was just impossible. Her muscles were destroyed from it. She is held up good at this point. Yes. So she started to urinate on the floor, Mm -hmm. on herself, like it was getting on the carpet and things like that. And this pissed the boys off. Like she was making a mess. So. Oh. I know. What did you actually expect? Like, I'm getting like, what so is the angry. Ends? Like, what are you, what do you think is going to happen? It had to be at some point clicking their mind, like, they're, like, we have to do something with this. Yeah. I mean, just, so at this point, the parents are catching on to what's going on. Five, after 44 days? I mean, they definitely probably knew, but it's not been 44 days yet. Oh. Let me just, yeah. We're in the beginning still. Stop. Oh so, my god. Okay, apparently go the parents were also like super scared of their son. Like he would get violent with them. Okay. So and they, they weren't kn- part of anything. I mean, they knew it was going on and they didn't do anything. Okay. They were they're afraid of him. They knew that he had ties with Yakuza. Mhm. And they thought like if they did something he was going to kill them too. Okay. So they just kind of allowed it to happen pretty right. much. Okay. They began to experiment with different torture methods. They began inserting things into her. Gotcha. So they would insert scissors, glass bottles, iron bars, and like steel kebab sticks into her vagina. Why? No, there's no reason. There's actually... Not one reason I know ever not. anyone could ever do this to someone. They put fireworks into Wait. her anus. Stop it. And lit them. Like, like set fireworks off in her. Like, how is she still alive? I don't know. They removed her left nipple with a pair of pliers. Stop it. And they would pierce her breasts with sewing needles. Like, just stick Stand them. Down. Yeah. They would put her in a freezer and leave her there for hours. Yeah, dude. I don't even... And, like, this whole time, they're raping her, too. Like, still with these deformities and... Every day, she's being raped multiple times. So, like, firework burns, sticking things, like, scissors into her vagina Mm -hmm. and then raping her after that. I had to take a minute there. I did like, yeah, too. Then they moved into a burning phase. What? They began to burn her with cigarettes and lighters. They taped candles to her eyelids. I don't know what type of candle. I guess like little like tea light can maybe. I don't know. I don't imagine they have any tea light candles laying around <laughs> on a... When the candle would burn or heat up... The hot wax would drop down into her eyeballs and her eyelids. I am anything with the eyes. Yeah. Speechless right now. Yeah. Do you know what happens if a light bulb gets too hot? It explodes? Bitch, it explodes. Did her eye explode? Did her eye explode? They would heat a light bulb up and insert it inside of her vagina. Stop it. And they would, like, punch her and hit her until it, like, got so hot in there that it exploded inside of her. Uh, We're on day 11. Stop it. Day 11? So that glass would be exploded inside of her. Mm -hmm. And then they would rape her. I bet it didn't get cut. Day 11, dude. Day 11. Okay. Okay. At 11 days, she can't breathe anymore through her nose because of all the swelling. Mm -hmm. Like, her entire body was in trauma. Like, they would try to give her food and water to keep her alive longer. Mm -hmm. And her body was rejecting it. Like, she couldn't even hold water down at this point anymore. I can, yes. She started to, like, go in and out of consciousness. And when that would happen, they would dunk her head into cold water to try to keep her awake. 
These parents had to know about it. I mean, that's a lot of movement around a house. There's so much happening down there. Yeah. How did you light a fire? Like, did you take her outside? Were you mm-hmm. out in your yard Just with doing this, this girl lighting fireworks off of her? I can't even, like, fathom what's happening. One day, a boy he came over to their house. He was also part of the Yazuka, and he, he would hang around with the boys a lot. He was one of the... Um, the people that they invited over to rape her in the beginning. Okay. He came over that day to rape her again. Like, they invited him. I was thinking that he was going to be, like, the guy that comes in <clears throat> and is, like, great. He he saw her and was like, bro, like, what is what is happening here? Like, she is deformed. She needs and- help. Like, she's, something's wrong. Like, something is happening and I don't, she like, she needs to go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. The four boys, they hated this. Like, they started telling him things, basically bullying him. They started mm-hmm. telling him things like, he can't be in Yakuza anymore. Like, you can't be a wimp. Yeah. So, basically, he gave in to the peer pressure and raped her. And then when he went home, like, after he sat there and, like, digested, like, what did I just do type of thing, he decides to tell his brother. And his brother told his parents what and the parents were like i'm sorry what and called the police so the brother okay recap real quick okay the guy who went over there to rape her okay that was like he'd already really done concerned he already, done, he'd it already done it but he was concerned because they were tor- like torturing they her? were taking it yeah too far like she had a missing nipple at this point yeah and he came home and just like couldn't hold it in he told his brother who then told their parents not the four boys the the rapist that just went over there his parents they called the police and told them like we this is what's going on there's they have a girl over there they're torturing her and raping her like she's gonna die Mm -hmm. if someone doesn't go over there and help and like we know the address like right there it is there Cops were like, okay, yeah, we're going to go check it out. And two police get there, and the parents answer the door. The cops explain to him, like, hey, we got this call that a girl was being held here and tortured and raped and, like, what is happening? Mm -hmm. And the parents were like, oh, my God, what? That's, no, Mm -hmm. we don't know anything about that. Maybe you can talk to my sons, though. So they get the boys. To come down and talk to the cops. And the boys acted, like, so innocent. Like... Really? We don't... That... You must have the wrong house. Like, we haven't heard anything here. You can come in and take a look if you want. And the cops are like, you know what? No, I'm sorry. Sorry for the inconvenience. We don't need to come in inside and look. Like, we'll just leave. Oh, my And left. I wonder if they would have killed the cops. I don't know. I, wonder if I feel like they them. knew the cops wouldn't come in if they acted like that. Maybe. I don't know. I didn't think about that part. The cops, after that, I mean, they said if they were the real people who did this, they wouldn't have invited them in. Uh, Those cops ended up getting fired, though. Did they? Yep, because they didn't do their job. And it was found out if the cops would have went in and searched and found her, she could have still recovered at yeah. this time. Like, she would have most likely made it. Mm-hmm. Multiple surgeries, long yeah. stint, that she would have made it. Physically, anyway. Yes. Yes. A few days later, and also, um, just because those cops lost their job, don't be, get it confused about the Japanese justice system. Okay. Because you're going to be so enraged later. Okay. A few days after that, Junko was able to get a hold of a phone. Like, literally, one, how is she moving? Yeah. And two... They left her in a room that had a phone in it, like alone in there. They're getting cocky, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. She got a hold of the phone and dialed 911. They answered, and right before she could, like, say, they were like, 911, what's your emergency? And right before she could say anything, the boys walked back into the room. And all they, they hung up the phone really quick mm-hmm. and literally just stood there because they knew they were about to call back. Yeah. And when they do, Hiroshi picks up the phone and just acts like, oh, I'm so sorry. It was a mistake. You know, my bad. And they were like, okay. And just hung out. They didn't connect that that was the same address? No. 
that they had already got one complaint from. Obviously, they are like past enraged at this point that she tried to do this. Yeah. And they decided that she needed punished. This man like that hurt. Like she hasn't been punished already. I mean, can you imagine that glimmer of hope when you see that phone? I cannot. She probably thought she was about to, like. She probably heard the cops too. Like, yeah. This poor girl. Go ahead. They grabbed gasoline and lighter fluid and covered her legs with it and set her on fire. I know. The pain was so extreme that she started to convulse. Yeah. Bitch. The boys, like, literally watched this scene. Like, they, they saw what was happening and said, she's faking it. How dare she fake being in this much pain? What? While she was on fire. I'm sorry, sir. Who couldn't handle the bruise from beating her. Oh, that's true. He couldn't handle the bruises. Now she's faking it. Which she's literally ablaze right now. Mm-hmm. So they put the fire out. Once it's out, they again pour gasoline and lighter fluid on her and reset her on fire. And the For wings? a second time. on the Exactly in the same spot. Yes. During this, they started to put glass bottles into her anus, and because of the heat, they were exploding. Yeah. Causing extreme internal damage. Then they raped her. Stop it. How? Dude, I do not know. I do not know. Like, she is, like, her skin is probably mush. They then had her hold her hands out on the floor and began to drop dumbbells on her hands. When she was found, her hands and fingers were shat. Like, they were broken, every single one of them. Shattered. And all of her fingernails had been cracked. So they were thinking, like, now she can't. Down 911. Yeah, now she can't pick up a phone. They forced her to sleep on the balcony in the middle of winter, naked. I don't know how... No one saw No this. one saw. She was unable to walk at this point. Understandably. Yeah. I read that she she could not walk for 20 out of the 44 days. Yeah. The last 20. Eventually... What day are we on? I don't... I don't know. Okay. I think it's around... I think this part is around 16, but don't Stop quote me it. on that. I might be wrong. No, because she couldn't walk for the last 20 days, so it has to be at least day 20. Okay. Eventually, the burns get so bad, like, you know, throughout the healing process, you know how when you get a burn, it starts, if it's like a bad one and it starts to heal, it just like gets like scarry. Yeah. yeah. They could barely even like touch her and pus would come out like anywhere on her body. Mm Mm-hmm. This they, is day 20. Oh, my gosh. Go they ahead. also... I don't know for sure if it's day... Don't, I think it's around that time. Don't okay. quote me on that. They they said that her skin was rotting off and she smelled bad. So, naturally, they, they were, lost sexual interest in her. Right. Now, they have. They decided that they were going to go back to the park and pick up another victim. They saw a 19-year-old girl and decided to gang rape her. She did survive. They didn't kidnap her. Not that that makes it better, but right. they left her there. Yeah. January 4th was the 44th day. January 4th. So we're we're moving ahead here. Okay. The boys are at home, just bored one day, and they decide to play a game of mahjong. 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 Mahjong? This is a game. Okay, that so uses tell me more that. <laughs> yes, it uses like tiles. It's similar to Rummy. It seems just like a normal, it's a never a normal game to play. Yeah, okay. I saw an article where they um, banned it in parts of China because Why? like the gambling was so intense. Like it just got like, oh, okay. Crazy, I guess okay. They decided that Junko should play with them, with her shattered fingers and hands, and burns. Oh. All over her body. They were like, you know what she should do is play this game with us. She probably wants to. She's been doing a good job. She should relax. Yeah. She deserves this this game. Bitch. She beats them. 
She beat them. D and this infuriated them. Like, final straw. Like, that was it Because she them. beat them. Because she beat them at this game. They thought again, we need to punish her. For beating them. Yep. Okay. Starting with a beating that will last two hours. Halfway through, the boys were like, oh my god, gross. She's getting pus on us. And then put plastic bags on their hands so they could continue to punch her and beat her. She began to have seizures again, which angered them. So they decided that it would be a good time to set her on fire again. This fire was out of control and they didn't want their house to burn down. Mm. So they put the, put the flames out. She never regained consciousness after this. Ultimately, that's, that's what killed her. I'm like, I don't want to say I'm relieved, but this poor girl. Yeah. have I have never heard of anything of like that. anything in my life like this story. When they realized that she was dead, they started to panic. Like, How are you panicking? Like, what do we do now? Like, we have to get rid of her body. I don't know. Like, For setting 24. fireworks off out of her anus outside in the open was not a panic moment. They had Gang raping people at the park, not a panic moment. 44 days they had to plan for this. But this is a... Like, you had to know she was going to die. Had to. So, again, because their plans are so good, they come up with another one. They decide to get a huge... Like, an oil barrel. Like, a huge... Mm -hmm. You know what I'm like talking about? Like a blue oil barrel. Yeah, yeah, like the big ones. Mm -hmm. um, and they filled it with concrete. Oh. And they put Junko inside of it. And waited for the concrete to set. They then took her and loaded her into a cement truck. They thought, like, we'll never be tracked down. Like, we don't have any ties with concrete or, like, cement. Like, they're not going to find this and be like, those are the boys who did it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, they thought their plan was solid. Is this a common way to get rid of bodies? Actually, I looked this up. I'm like, mm -hmm. I, how do you know so, that's about this? <laughs> they, this is a common way, especially if you live close to water. Okay. It's to, like, throw the the barrels and concrete and things like that down to the water it takes it to the bottom mm -hmm. but the downfall to this is if they are found the concrete has like preserved the body so if they do oh. an autopsy they're gonna pretty much find everything gotcha okay that so preserves evidence yeah so their past starts to catch up to them not really their past because it it's current. literally happened. Mm -hmm. um, that 19-year-old girl that they gang raped has been going to the police, like, nonstop, like, demanding that they do something. Yeah, like, hello. Like, the, the, I was at the park. Like, can you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And during that investigation, people started to slowly speak up, saying that they saw the boys at the park. Um, they heard the rumor that they were connected with Yakuza. Mm-hmm. Now, two of the boys, Joe and Yasushi, were brought in for questioning. Oh, okay. Dude. These stupid idiots. <laughs> like, I can't. Uh, I mean, one? ultimately, it's a good thing. Okay. All, not the cops. The okay, boys. the boys. Okay. So, there was a, a, an open murder investigation going on. Not Junko's, a different one. A different one. Okay. They were there for questioning about the gang rape. Okay. But somehow... The open murder investigation came up, like, just in conversation. I don't know exactly how it got brought up. Like, just whatever. a random one? Yeah. Okay. Um, but, I mean, of course, like I said, it wasn't Junko's because they weren't looking for her. Right. They didn't think. They thought she just ran away still. Yeah. The cops, you know, kept hinting about it, and those two boys immediately assumed the cops were talking about Junko. Oh. And they were, like, freaking out, dude. Like, started mm -hmm. to panic. And finally, Yashushi says, okay, if I tell you something, will I receive a lesser sentence? <gasps> Stupid. Stupid. The cop was like, I mean, maybe. We can talk like, about what's it. happening right mm -hmm. now? And he just told him, like, go to the cement truck. This is where it is. And just, like, go through the barrels. Like, look through the barrels. That is the quickest fold I've ever seen. Yeah. And the cops went along with it. Like, they never let him know. That they had no idea what he was talking about. Like, they thought that they were going to find the other 
people that they were actually investigating. Right. It was like a mom and a, a child. Oh. And that's the one they were investigating. They thought that's what he was, that's talking, what he was about. talking about. But they went in the truck and they found the concrete that had Jinko in it. Oh. Well, they didn't know it was Jinko. They just knew she it had was, a body. They couldn't tell who it was. Like, that's how her whole body was. It didn't look like her ever. Even right. if you saw her, like, within those 44 days, she was unrecognizable because of right. everything they did. When she was taken in for an autopsy, they found something crazy. Although, no way. Although the autopsies um, are more accurate. Like, this is where I start talking about, like, the concrete thing. Okay, and, yes. You know, it, it really preserved her. Mm-hmm. Um, they immediately saw that her uterus had, like, the most extreme damage. Like, so much. But somehow, she was pregnant. No. Yeah. So, one of them yep. killed the mother of their child. The boys were quickly arrested. All four of them. Mm-hmm. Like, they just straight... They just knew. And immediately, they just all told on each other. Mm-hmm. You're about to they be... They all told on each other? I guess. I mean, it just literally went from the autopsy to all four of them were arrested. They were only questioning two. I'm going to guess Yasushi, because he oh, instantly told them. He folded very quickly. Immediately. And threw as many names he could in there. Yeah. You're about to be so pissed. Why? At this part. In Japan, not this part, but they don't release identities until someone is convicted of a crime. Okay. Which... I kind of like. I think that's I like a, that too. I think that's a really good idea. Yes. I don't know if it was like going to be different in this situation, but they said, well, these boys are juveniles and we think after they serve their time, they should be able to get back into society and not have issues with finding jobs. Uh, let's just take that in for a minute. Literally. So... My impression, it didn't say this anymore, but I, my impression was that they were, they didn't ever want to release their identities. Okay. Because they thought it would cause them harm. Later and on. And they would have the issues finding jobs. Later on. So, the media, a media outlet, like, caught wind of what was going on. Did they bust them? Yeah, they did some digging and found out who these boys really were. Ooh. And they literally released it to everyone in Japan. Okay. Like, everyone knew... They were panicked. So they released the names. Yes. So literally the charges that they were convicted of committing bodily injury that resulted in death. That's it. That's That's what they were. That's what they were convicted of. Did they confess all of this? They convinced the courts that they didn't mean to kill her. That wasn't their ultimate goal. You know what? I don't think that that was their ultimate goal either. I'll just be really honest with you. I think that they thought that they could play and play with her forever without... They weren't thinking of the consequences of her actually dying. Literally. I don't know what to think about it. I mean, what did they think was going to happen? You light someone on fire. I mean, How did she not get an infection and die? I don't know. She survived so much. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, too. I mean, yeah, I mean, I definitely don't agree with what they got charged with, but... These boys were like, I don't even think they thought of her as a person. Literally, if someone, if that was released here, Mm -hmm. one, it would immediately go nationwide in America. Mm -hmm. It would be two counts of first degree murder because she was pregnant. Plus torture. Torture, Mm -hmm. kidnapping, rape. Like, dude, they'd be in there for death sentence. Mm -hmm. That's not what happened. They can, they... So they weren't convicted of murder, just bodily harm resulting in death. Yeah, like if you... Like if you hit someone with a car. Yeah. Okay. And it, on accident, and it, like, kills them. Okay. That's what the charge was there. Hiroshi was 18 at the time of the murder. In July 1990, he was sentenced to 17 years. He didn't appeal, and his appeal upset the judge. And instead of granting the appeal, the judge added on three more years. Okay. He is out now. He was released in 2010. What's he, he doing now? He was in his 30s. So even now, he's just like out living his life. He's like in his 40s right now. Wow. His parents ended up selling their home and sent Junko's, Junko's parents $425,000. Who did? 
Hiroshi's parents. Why do you send them that much money? I don't know if they felt guilty and mm-hmm. thought, like, they all owed Junko's parents money. I know that they, Junko's parents, filed a civil suit against Sinji's parents because they were understand in his house. house. Yeah. Yes, like, you knew this was happening. Um, but somehow all four of the the parents owed them money. I don't know, like, okay. the logistics of it. Because they're like under that. 18, so it automatically transferred to them. I don't know, but yeah. I'm guessing that. Yeah, their parents were, like, responsible mm-hmm. because they were juveniles. So, <sighs> three years after Hiroshi's release, he was arrested again on fraud charges. Fraud charges? Mm-hmm. But the charges were dropped due to insufficient evidence. I'm okay so. with him doing fraud charges, man. Yeah. If that's all he's doing right now, okay. He should have never really... I know. Never gotten out. He should have never gotten out after that. Literally, I've never heard of anything. They would die immediately here in prison. Yeah, they would have. Instantly. They would have. <sighs> Sinji yeah. was 16 at the time of the murder. And it was in his house. Mm-hmm. He received four to six years... He also tried to appeal, same judge, and the judge added time for him, too. So, he ended up officially with five to nine years. How much did he serve? I don't, it did not say with that one. But he was in his 20s and he was released. Yep. When he re- was released, he immediately moved back in with his parents and, and never that. worked. Never worked? Never worked. In 2018, he was arrested again for attempted murder. Okay. Is he still in there now? Or did something... They're all out. He's Every out. single one of them are out. Even from the 2018 murder? Yes. He's out again? He's out. So is the kids like hooking them up? Like is that what's happening right now? So I did read a theory that that's the reason their sentences were so... Like something. Yeah, but... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I was making sure... <laughs> you did. I did. I was making sure 2018 was correct. Um... I'll, I'll double check that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it said. That just seems really recent now it that does. I'm reading it again. But either way, they're all out right now. I know that for sure. Unless something happened like in the past few days. No. Oh. <laughs> Which is possible. So he beat a 32 year old man and slit his throat. And then told the cops again, he didn't mean to kill him. It, that wasn't his intention. And the charges they are putting on him are stupid. I swear. Um. Yasushi was given three to four years. What? When he appealed, it was bumped up to five to six years. The same judge? Same judge. Why do they keep doing that? I don't... He... Because they thought that they didn't deserve to be in prison over this. Like, they literally thought we didn't do anything wrong. Like, what? I don't... Why am I getting sentenced? Three years is what I got. I'm just going to throw that out there. Again? For a possession of heroin. I mean... Literally, in this, they they tortured a woman for no, forty four days. They tortured a child for 44 a child. Days. So he Yashushi did try to get back on track. Um, he's the only one who hasn't been rearrested. Not that that makes him a good person, but mm-hmm. he might be trying. I don't know. He hasn't been back to jail yet. So Joe was sentenced to eight years in prison. He was released in nineteen ninety nine. When he was released, he bragged nonstop. Like, they said he just would not stop. Like, yeah, do you remember that case with the girl? That was me. Okay. Just, like, bragging about it everywhere. Mm -hmm. No remorse at that point. No. And in July of 2004, he assaulted and kidnapped one of his friends. He felt like his girlfriend was flirting with with his friend. Oh. Okay. The friend ended up escaping and went straight to the police. And Joe received seven years for, for that. that. Daddy got seven years. He ever? got seven years for that, and he got eight. Only got eight years for keeping someone hostage and torturing and murdering them and their unborn child. Joe, I wish they would have done DNA on the baby. Literally, like Joe's mom. Apparently, when Joe was in prison, vandalized, she vandalized the gravesite of Junko and said it was because Junko ruined her son's life. Oh. 
And when Joe got out of prison, he apparently stole all the money that his dad had been saving to pay Junko's parents. Oh. Like, he stole it all and just, like, blew through it. Mm-hmm. And because he didn't want... Them to get he it. He didn't think they deserved... Yeah. Like, he has zero remorse. So, right now, all four of them are out of prison. And they have different names. All four of them have changed their names. And due to forensics, other people have been linked to Junko's murder and rape because of things that they found on her body. Were any of them prosecuted? I don't know. Didn't sound like it. I think I was depressed at this point. Just stop like, that's the end. Okay. So. So, were they funded through? Like, were they being helped by anyone else? What do you mean? Like, was the Yakuza, like, helping them? Like, through all this? Like, were they still members? That's what I'm asking. The, I mean, that's what the theory is. That they helped them get lesser sentences. They've never, like, openly... Said that? Why would they? Been against them or, like, been with them. Like, but mm-hmm. a lot of people have said they think that's why their sentences were so low. Mm-hmm. Japan, apparently, was just like, these are juveniles, so they don't know what they're... They're just so silly. Yeah. So young and silly. I I can see that to a certain point. Mm Mm-hmm. Like stealing. Mm Mm-hmm. Stealing. Stealing possession of pot. (laughs) Like, yeah, possession of pot. But like that is not something you know what you're doing. Yeah. Sixteen, seventeen years old, like I knew what 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 I was doing. I just I didn't care about the consequences, but Mm -hmm. But even if the boys were like, one of them was like, eh, like this peer pressure, you know what I mean? Participating in something like that. After like a day, they'd be like, I need to do something about this and get away from this right now. But yeah. none of them did. None of them none did. None of them did. And also here, those parents would have been prosecuted. Mm-hmm. The parents And the brother. Been. And the brother. Yep. I mean, we know someone who was literally in the gas station with the person who shot the gas station, like in a burglary, and mm-hmm. she got charged with murder as well. Yep. Because she was participating. Even, yeah. So, anyway, yeah, I apologize. I really didn't think anything could talk the, top the vampire killer. Yeah. That one was gruesome. That one was gruesome. People were messaging me like, whoa, like, what is happening? And this one was even worse. It was. And it was very much worse. It was a lot worse. So, I'm going to go back and see who requested that and, like, message them later. Like, you... <laughs> I've been having nightmares. Have Brian you? was like, you need to stop. Like, watch something happy. I want to see what she looked like. She's beautiful. I'll show you a picture. Yeah, so... I also do want to give a shout-out to my husband, Brian, because we put him through a lot. We do. He's, like, our sound guy, our editor. Our complainer. Complainer. I mean, (laughs) our complaints. He tells us if he doesn't like something, what to fix. Yes. He's not shy about it. So, um, yeah, shout-out to him, because we... He puts up with a lot from us. He does. He tells me every week I'm going to start editing my, the episodes on myself by myself. And I don't know if you guys know, but we um, have a lot of edits to make. Yeah. <laughs> when it's time. <laughs> Pages on us. So, um, yeah. We're getting better. You we, give us our We're credits. getting a lot better. Yeah. So, if you guys have any suggestions, um, you know, or... If you need to go watch cat videos after this, because I think I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to watch some cat videos. Usually I listen to them on the way home. I think I've got to take a break on this yeah, one this for the one, night. Yeah, this one will have a lot of edits because I think I paused like so many times to re- get myself together. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So, yeah, if you guys want to reach out to us, um, we have a Facebook, Instagram, and murderwordspodcast at gmail.com. Or you can go to our website, murderwords.com. I upload the episodes on there as well. So, okay. We will talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.